The race is on to create a coronavirus vaccine. Even as pharmaceutical giants and institutions roll out trials at breakneck speed, many entrepreneurs are also rushing to disrupt the way we see a doctor and a diagnose. This transition that we are in, it's, it started even before the pandemic. I'm speaking to three startup CEOs to get the pulse on how they're evolving the medical technology industry amid the pandemic. The world was changing. We had to change as well as a company. We would like to understand how our device can support early detect COVID or better detect COVID. The World Health Organization describes medical technology or medtech as the use of knowledge and technology in devices, medicines and procedures to advance human health. One aspect of that that's been vital lately is telemedicine or remote healthcare services. In 2019, the global telemedicine market was worth $45.5 billion, with projections to almost quadruple by 2026. With more people staying indoors and social distancing during the pandemic, there is a growing demand for remote medical services. We have more than double our volumes in a very short time. That's a market 32-year-old Swedish entrepreneur, Johannes Schilt, and his co-founders have been working on since launching their medical video consultation service in 2015. The platform, known as Kri, or Livy in English-speaking markets, connects users directly with qualified doctors via its app as an alternative to in-person care. You save travel, it's very convenient, you don't have to be in a waiting room, being sneezed at. Now, of course, with the rather sad backdrop of a pandemic, it's starting to be painfully obvious for a lot of people that this is a, a crucial part of the healthcare infrastructure moving forward. Between February and April, the company saw demand in Europe surge more than 160%, both for COVID-19 queries and general care. Healthcare professionals too are eager to move their services online as a new revenue stream. There's definitely a change from, from the clinician side where they are eager to try out new services and deliver healthcare in new ways. Out of necessity, right? Because you have to. That has also prompted the company to roll out Livy Connect, a free basic service, in response to growing demand during the pandemic. While healthcare regulators were previously cautious about rolling out telemedicine services, Johannes says that the pandemic has led to a rethink of regulations, which could accelerate his vision for healthcare. One of our bottlenecks have been uh, market access that you've had nations that was not allowed to do telemedicine and it was not reimbursed. But this is now rapidly changing uh, across the globe. On a policy side, I think a lot of this is here to stay and have opened the eyes for a lot of people and entities that what we have been doing for five years is uh, not a good thing. Elsewhere, some developments have come about almost by chance, according to Harpreet Singh Rai, CEO of Finnish smart health tracker Aura. The wearable, a titanium ring, was released in 2015 to give people a picture of their overall health score by monitoring their movement and sleep, among other functions. A drop in the scores could be an early predictor of an illness or even preempt the flu season. As it turns out, the ring was also able to detect COVID-19 symptoms up to three days in advance with 90% accuracy. This all started actually on March 11th. Um, a user of ours made a Facebook post detailing actually what happened. He saw changes in his Aura Ring data. You know, he had been traveling the prior days and he decided to go get a test for COVID. Turns out he was positive. And then he detailed it. You know, he described himself as asymptomatic, which he thought made this virus so dangerous and, you know, told people about his experience with Aura and seeing such meaningful changes in data that allowed him to, you know, understand that he may be sick. Now, the company is finding ways to use telltale data, such as body temperature, sleep patterns, and heart rate variability, to help detect cases among frontline workers and general users. We've obviously since then seen businesses who are interested as they try to figure out how to reopen this economy. The Las Vegas Sands actually was our first customer. Given what was happening, we just wanted to figure out how we can help. That includes partnering with athletes to get the sports calendar back on track. In June, the NBA bought more than a thousand rings, which cost upwards of $300 each, as their season resumes. We work really, really hard with both the NBA, the NBA PA, which is essentially their union, um, to make sure that players felt secure about their data. And so what we did as a company was cleverly, our team came up with this idea of a risk score. It's an aggregated you know, view of the probability of risk. And if someone is really elevated on the risk score, they then actually call the team medical doctor and they suggest that a second test be done for COVID. With finite tests available and the cost still high, 
It's important to find alternative means of collecting data on the virus too. That's where Lea von Bieder, co-founder of women's healthcare company Ava, comes in. The Swiss company's flagship product, the Ava Bracelet, launched in 2016 to help women track their fertility cycles. Ava the Bracelet um, looks like this. I wear it right now. It picks up 3 million data points a night. So breathing rate, perfusion, skin temperature, heart rate. Over the years, the tracker has helped more than 30,000 couples get pregnant in Europe and the US. But now, the 30-year-old CEO and her team are using Ava's anonymized data to figure out how the coronavirus impacts women specifically. What's really interesting with us coming from this fertility and menstrual cycle background is that we understand the normal for women really, really well, which is important now when we look at, at COVID. And what might that mean for women and pregnancy specifically? In the past, we've often had the issues that women weren't included in clinical studies because they were, quote unquote, too complex or for, for whatever was studied, right? And I think in this case specifically, it's really important to look at what changes there are already happen in order to really understand what's happening with COVID and women. Meanwhile, the multi-sensory bracelet is being put to use in various pan-European studies to monitor symptoms of the virus on broader cross-sections of society. We started in March our first clinical study to see if we can early detect symptoms of COVID. A few weeks later, we got um, a rather large grant in Europe to run a very large study with 40,000 participants using our device to monitor symptoms. And this is not only focused on women, it's also not only focused on fertility or pregnancy, it's really a broad study where we give our bracelet and our technology to a larger cohort to really understand what we can learn out of the data for COVID. While it's not yet clear what role these innovations will play in the fight against COVID-19, the way you keep your health in check in future could look very different. Consumers know now that these devices have gotten more accurate. The health applications can be greater and greater. And I still think we're pretty low penetration. You know, if you look at the value of that, the value of understanding that you may be getting sick and then protecting yourselves, you know, from spreading this and protecting your loved ones and your fellow colleagues. I mean, that's huge.